Welcome to the PKB. My name is Rebecca Carey, and I'm here to show you what to expect during your first event with us. At the conclusion of the webinar, we will have a question and answer session with one of our staff members. Let's get started. Here's a quick look at what we'll talk about during the webinar. One, preparing for your tournament. Two, pace to play tips and tricks. Three, basic rules you'll need to know. Four, spectator do's and don'ts. Five, the scoring area. What is appropriate attire? As a player, you are a guest of the golf course hosting the event and a representative of the PKB. Proper attire while at the course is required at all times. Most players arrive to the course roughly 45 minutes to an hour before their tee time. When you get to the course, you must come to tournament check-in before warming up. At check-in, you will double check your tee time, meet the tournament staff, and get your membership gifts. All players must be at the starting tee 10 minutes before their tee time. This allows you to meet your playing partners, receive your scorecard and rule sheets, and ask any additional questions you may have. Players will be teeing off at their designated tee time, so it is important to show up 10 minutes early. Let's be real here, guys. Nobody wants to be on the golf course for six hours, right? That's why pace to play is important. I'm gonna go over a few ways to increase your pace to play without rushing your routines. You have 40 seconds to play your shot once you get to the ball, no more. Preparing to hit your shot while walking to your ball and limiting practice swings are good ways to prevent you from going over 40 seconds. Play ready golf. This means that the first player that is ready to go may take their shot even if they are not the furthest player from the hole. If you think your ball would be lost or out of bounds, hit a provisional shot and declare, I'm going to hit a provisional to your playing partners. Preparing for your shot while another player is taking theirs. This means finding out the yardage and making your club selection before it is even your turn. Let's look at two examples. Here you can see the two players walking down the fairway. Instead of walking towards her golf ball, player two follows player one to her ball. Let's look at an alternative. While player one heads to her ball, player two goes to her ball and measures the distance before it's her turn. It's the little things that can make a difference in speeding up pace of play. When putting, please, please do not mark six inch putts. Go ahead and putt out. You may still take your time taking these putts. First player who finishes will grab the flag stick and the second person will go to their bag slash head to the next tee while the final member is finishing up the hole. The rules of golf can be scary and intimidating to new players. We're here to not only provide a place for you to compete, but for you to get comfortable with the rules, especially when the ball doesn't go where you want it to go. Oops, you just hit it in the pond. You walk up and see that there are red stakes and probably a red line surrounding the pond. Now what? Here are the four most common ways to handle this situation. First, you can always play it as it lies under no penalty. Remember, do not ground your club while in a hazard. Second, you can take two club lengths from where you entered the hazard. This is a one-stroke penalty. Third, you can replay your last shot under a one-stroke penalty. Fourth, on the line between your point of entry and the flag stick, you can go back as far as you want and drop it. This is also a one-stroke penalty. Now, what if you walk up to the pond and see that it has yellow stakes? Here are the ways you can handle that situation. First, once again, you can always play it as it lies under no penalty, but you are not allowed to ground your club. Second, 
You may replay your last shot under a one stroke penalty. And third, on the line between your point of entry and the flag stick, you can go back as far as you want and drop it. This is also a one stroke penalty. So what happens when you hit your ball outside the boundaries of the courts, which is defined by white stakes, white lines, property fences, and or public roads? This is called out of bounds. If a ball is out of bounds, the player must play the ball under penalty of one stroke as nearly as possible at the spot from which the original ball was last played. This means that you go back to where you hit your last shot and play again under penalty of one stroke. As the player, you may deem your ball unplayable at any place on the course except when the ball is in a red or yellow staked hazard. You are the sole judge as to whether the ball is unplayable or playable. If you deem your ball unplayable, you must, under one penalty stroke, play the ball as close as possible to the spot from which the original ball was last played. Drop a ball behind the point where the ball lies, keeping the point directly between the hole and the spot on which the ball is dropped, with no limit to how far behind that point the ball may be dropped. Or you may drop a ball within two club lengths of the spot where the ball lies, but no closer to the hole. Part path relief, otherwise known as an immovable obstruction. Your ball has landed on a cart path and you don't want to scrub up those shiny new clubs. Guess what? You get to drop it without a penalty. Let's look at how to take relief from a cart path. First, you need to find your nearest point of relief. This is the closest place to where your ball lies, but off the cart path. Remember, you must take complete relief. This means your heels can't still be on the cart path. Once you establish your nearest point of relief, put a tee where your club head would be if you were playing the shot. From that point, you receive one club length. You must now drop it within that club length. When you drop the ball, it may not roll closer to the hole or further than two club lengths. Your ball is now in play. Things to note. You are not required to take relief from a cart path unless otherwise noted on your rule sheet. Examples of immovable obstructions that may require you to take full relief are flower beds. Make sure you look at your rule sheets before you round to make any notes of any areas where this is required. Your nearest point of relief is not always your best point of relief. This means if your nearest point is behind a tree, you might want to consider hitting it off the cart path. Always announce to your playing partners that you are taking relief when doing so. We encourage spectators to come out and support PKB players in action, but there are several spectator do's and don'ts that are essential to making the event run smoothly. Let's take a look. Do's. Spectators and parents may encourage players at all times. Spectators and parents are encouraged to help find lost balls and act as four caddies on blind shots. Spectators and parents may carry food and water for their players. Spectators and parents may help shuttle players to their next tee in their spectator carts at designated shuttle areas. However, it is a PKB policy that a player may not ride in the same cart as their parents or guardian. Now on to the don'ts. Spectators and parents may not offer advice on any condition of play during the official round. This includes rules advice, playing advice, swing thoughts, etc. If your player needs assistance, please call the hotline. Communication between spectators and parents must be in English to ensure a level playing field for all players. Any communications between player and parent is deemed by the tour to be advice unless proven otherwise. This is why parents should only communicate with their players in the presence of another player or a tournament official. Spectators and parents may not disrupt play or affect the conditions of play. Unsportsmanlike conduct 
will not be tolerated. Violations or violators will be removed from the golf course and may face bans from the tour. A player asking or receiving advice from an outside source is a breach of the rules of golf and is subject to a two-stroke penalty. At the end of each round, there will be a defined area for the players to go to complete their round. Players must immediately proceed to this area after putting out on the final hole. The round is not officially over until you complete and sign your scorecard in the scoring area. Outside communication with spectators and parents about scores or other matters is considered advice and against the rules. If your group had any ruling questions, please bring this up to the staff member in the scoring area. Make sure to confirm your hole-by-hole -hole scores with the playing partner that was responsible for keeping your score. You are only responsible for the hole-by-hole, -hole, not adding up the total score. Make sure to sign the playing partner scorecard you are responsible for and your own scorecard as well. Not signing your scorecard is grounds for a DQ. Once you leave the scoring area, your score is final and no changes can be made. Parents slash spectators are not allowed in any scoring areas. The only exception is in the discovery division, they may have their caddies in the scoring area with them. Thanks for listening. We are excited to see you at the first event. Please hang around and ask questions with a PKB representative following this video.